And we cannot separate folklore from fact. Too many times we swear by folklore not knowing that it has nothing to do with facts. All right. Who exactly is a Jew? All right. There was no word called Jew in the ancient world. The word Jew did not come out of Africa. It did not come out of Western Asia. It is a European word. There are people of the Hebrew faith all over the world. There are black Hebrew, there are brown Hebrew, there are yellow Hebrew. How is it that a bunch of Europeans called Jews dominate the word Jew to the extent of making you think that the very faith Hebrew is exclusive to them leaving out all other people. All right. We become prisoners to circumstances in history, becoming prison to these circumstances in history, we still react to this conquest of the mind. In slavery, we wanted to associate ourselves with the people who had escaped from something. So we read a Jewish escape story called the Exodus. And we believed it. And we didn't examine the story. Because if you examine the story, you will find the story is told to instill faith in a people. And sometimes, if a story is told to instill faith and truth, the illustration used to get the point across need not be true. Tell me how can 600,000 people cross the Nile, cows, children, goats, sheep, and get on the other side? No laws. The Nile just dried up. It must have been muddy. And they didn't even get their feet muddy. Now, you can do it with imagination, but in fact, you can't do it. They copied, these Western Asian people copied Nile Valley folk stories, personified themselves into the story, and sold you your own story, and you bought it. Now let's go back and deal with where they copied the story from. There's a three-volume work published by the University of Chicago on Egyptian literature. I would appreciate it if the people on my right would just let me be heard. dealing with Egyptian literature. And there is a story in the three volumes dealing with a pharaoh who got somewhat despondent and his magician decided to take him rowing on the Nile. 
and to make him more happy, the boat was being roared by beautiful ladies. The lead lady stopped roaring and started crying, and the Pharaoh was very much concerned with what had happened. And he asked the lead lady what had happened. He said she had dropped her necklace in the Nile. And the Pharaoh told the magician to take care of it. At this period in history, all kings or pharaohs travel with the magician. Instead of you and I having a fight, we have a contest between our respective magicians. We didn't take the nation to war. The two magicians settled the matter. So this magician parted the water, dried up the Nile, stepped out, picked up the lady's necklace, gave it back, water came back, she smiled and kept rowing the boat over. That's why the Jews copied the story about the part of the world. <laughs> what I am saying is that at this period in history, there was no such thing as a Jew. There were Western Asian people who later joined the Hebrew faith. There was an extensive series on the history of the Jews. They gave them an artificial history before Babylonia. But they had no clear history before their entry into Africa as visitors seeking food and shelter. There in Africa, they sought and found food and shelter. They entered Africa with no clear language, no clear religion, and no clear culture. When they left, they came as 70 in number. They left 600,000 in number. They had a culture, a language, and a religion when they left. All taken from Africa. They were not Hebrews when they got there, but they were Hebrews when they left. Now you join the religion as though you got to do it with their permission, because the European Jews of the faith gave you the illusion that everything must be dispensed to you because you invented nothing and you achieved nothing. And there in the Nile Valley, in the river valleys of Africa, you had set in motion the social thought that would be the foundation of what you know as Western civilization. And yet you have forgotten how to claim it. Now these visitors came into Africa in the 1700s BC, led by a patron father, Abraham. 1675, Africa was invaded from Western Asia. Instead of taking the side of the Africans, they took the side of the invaders. But while under the invaders, while they served as collaborators and clerks and betrayers of their African friends, they produced the world's first wheeler dealer politician called Joseph the Provider. 